Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do another fun painting. So let's get started. We'll start off today with a two inch brush and a little bit of blue and black. And let's start right up here at the top and drop in a beautiful little, little bit of a blue area. I think we're going to do a sunset today. And as you can see, I have a masking tape piece along the bottom there. That's going to give me a straight horizon. We're going to have a little bit of an ocean back there today. But it's going to be different and exciting. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I think we're going to paint a little sailboat today on the, on the water. It's not something I've ever done before. <laughs> so we're doing it for the first time together. Now with some yellow, red, and white on a one inch brush. Let's go right here. Drop in a beautiful little glow. Maybe the sun is somewhere behind clouds that we'll put in later. And work away from this area, adding more red. So you get a beautiful orange color. See that? Nice. Add more and more of this red as you go away from that center. And it also keeps you a little safer. That way you won't get a bright green. Although a little bit of green is actually a good thing. We do want a little tiny hint of green, but not much. You'll, you'll get it automatically, don't worry. All right. Now with our filbert brush and a very light dusting of red and black, touch of brown and blue. Let's go ahead and <laughs> just begin to sort of make the sky look nice. We threw the basic colors on there and, oh, let's face it, <laughs> it's a little weird. So we need to work with it. Sometimes in painting skies, especially sunsets, you have no choice but to just throw the color on there like we did because it's behind. And then you shape all the, the rest of the areas with these clouds. That's what makes it look nice. So don't panic. Just follow along with the steps and you'll get there. Don't worry. Really, I'm, I'm using the filbert brush even though it's a little bit slower. I'm using it at least on the top clouds. I'll probably change to the one inch brush later just to get it in down here. But I wanna really have some delicate edges where, where you can see them. All right, and I'm doing subtle color changes all the time. See that? Now I've changed to a one inch brush. This will just really help things go a lot faster. And I'm using long horizontal sweeping strokes here to, to complete the sky. Now the one inch brush will work a little bit more smoothly than the filbert brush. So be careful that you don't blend your colors too much. All right, maybe let's go ahead and just work this color way down here. I like it. Maybe a little bit of red. I'm just varying all the colors. I got, oh, I got almost everything going here on my palette. Now, nothing too vibrant. I don't want any pure colors, so almost everything here is a mix of colors. Very nice. Now, these skies are so much fun to paint, but you do have to work in steps, and maybe the most important part to creating a sunset, or, or really any painting with a, with a beautiful sky, is to make sure you don't have too much paint down. Because if you get too much paint, oh, it'll cause problems. In fact, I did a, a recent newsletter addressing that, that problem about, I hear it all the time, about people who are trying to paint white clouds over a blue sky and they can't make it work, all they get is mud. And I, I took a little bit of time and just wrote up a newsletter explaining how, how to fix it, how to identify all the problems. If you're not signed up for the newsletter, there's a link to my website below. Go check it out. You can subscribe for free and occasionally you'll get little tips and special offers and just keeps you up on what I'm doing. Now we can go ahead and peel off this masking tape. And as you can see, it just gives us a beautiful straight horizon. Now we'll take the filbert brush and just add in a, a mountain right here. Tiny little island or something, maybe a rock projection. Doesn't really matter what it is so much. Just need a little shape and color back there. And fill it in. Not too dark. It's, it's sort of far away. 
Now, as you can see, I have a pretty basic sketch of a sailboat here. <laughs> and it did take a, a few minutes of trial and error to get the shape right. I have a photo that I'm working from. So now I have a little bit of yellow and white. And I think this, this back sail here, it's gonna be reflecting a lot of the sunlight. It's gonna be very highlighted today. Now I'm no expert on boats. So I went ahead and got myself a great picture to work from so that I, I get it right for you. All right, this is looking good. You know, I even recommend getting a boat or a structure, you know, buildings I find a little easier. I've done more of them, so it's not such a problem. But if you're doing a structure that you're not sure how to paint, find a photo just of the, of the thing you want. It doesn't have to be in any kind of a scene or anything. Maybe you've taken a photo of a boat that you really like, but make sure that the, the sunlight is hitting the boat in the same way your painting would, because then you don't have to guess about the shading and the highlights. Because I don't know that I would guess right here. And if, if you have this photo of this special boat that you really want, just adjust your light source accordingly. We all know how to paint the light source in the landscape. That's not a problem. All right. Next, I'll load the filbert brush with a nice light purple color. And with this, we'll scrub in the side of the boat. Now this is an interesting angle. The boat's almost tipping back just a little. So it's like this, not perfectly straight up and down. And this is the bottom of the boat that we can actually see as it's kind of rolling in the waves. And that's a lot more interesting <laughs> than just a boat going straight in flat water. This is stormy today, look at that sky. It really adds some interest to the painting. And we'll come and cut around this boat with our water later. Now with the mix of red, brown, and black on the filbert brush. Let's just underpaint some of the water here. Now maybe as it comes away from this light source, it gets darker. <laughs> Be careful around the sailboat. But I hope you can see how it really helped to do it first. Because this way, I was able to set my hand down on the the canvas here and not, not mess up anything that we had all down already. And also, we didn't have any slippery paint to deal with, so it just made everything a lot easier. Now with our filbert brush and some blue, red, and white. Let's go ahead and scrub in some beautiful, beautiful waves here. I love the look of that. You see what this is going to do is just add some, some extra detail and interest, especially on the right side of the painting. So we have the light source and the boat is actually kind of on the left. So we'll do the wave on the right. It'll make for a nice composition. And those, little, those little compositional things are kind of important to keep in mind. They really make your painting a lot nicer. So give it a try when you when you paint. Kind of plan it out. And make sure the composition works and you like it. And then roll with it. It's a lot of fun. There. Just scrub in all these different waves and different little water movements as, as you go around this painting. All right. And we'll worry about maybe a couple of waves here. But sort of maybe the boat is making these waves. All right. Now we can go ahead and drop on just a little bit of highlight out here. I'm using some yellow, white, touch of red in there. You see I'm just dropping a little bit on, not too much. Maybe skip around, there's some. And you can blend it in as you go with this brush. Just blend, set it on, wipe the brush, and just blend it right in. Right, you don't want it overly soft. You want to leave some of these beautiful textures in there. That's what makes it look like the wave is splashing. There's a lot of waves today. Now without thinning the paint, I'll just scoop up some yellow and white on the liner brush. And this is very, very thick paint. And I'll use this just to drop in some beautiful, beautiful little highlight areas here. Just a different way to do it. You can do it with the filbert as you saw. 
but this is just a bit of a different technique. Gives a little extra detail, and I think it just <laughs> adds a sparkle that I really like to the painting. So I just wanted to make you aware that you have options, and oh, there's so many different ways you can do things. All right, you can use this. There, just sort of draw in a few lines here. Very faint. This paint is not thinned, because if you were to thin it, it would become kind of muddy. We're not drawing lines, we're using it more like a long skinny paintbrush. All right. Next I'll load the filbert brush with some blue, white, and red. It makes just a beautiful purple color. And let's just start here and begin to work on some, some nice foam details. Now I need to explain why I'm doing these right where I'm doing them, because it's important that you know. What I'm doing is I'm creating a lot of detail here in the foreground, and then I'm going to leave, well, I'm going to leave less detail in the background. That's what's going to create depth in this painting, because this is all just water. Sometimes you can have a little bit of trouble getting the depth the way you need it. Also, look how large the waves are, and then obviously they get smaller as they go back. So there's a big set of waves, a smaller set of waves, and then your little waves in the background. Another, another thing is you want to remember about the shadows. See, in the sunlight area, you really want a lot of that yellow and red in there, but in the, in the shadows, you can do more purples and blues. <laughs> Those are just a few of my little seascape painting tips for you. Hope you find them helpful. All right, really create a lot of this beautiful dimension and form with these lines. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out my website, my DVDs, and also my brush line. And thanks for watching.